I am Shane Brinkman Davis Delamore, and this is Code and Optimism, a show where we discuss how to solve problems faster with software. Today's topic is truth. Now, why are we talking about something perhaps so abstract and esoteric as truth? I think that we often take truth for granted and talk about it like it's something we can hold in our hands. And I want to talk about it here because the whole point of this show is to make real improvements in our ability to solve problems using software faster. How do we program faster? How do we get value out of the computer faster given how much time we put into it? In order to do that, we need to have ways of convincing ourselves that we're actually achieving those goals. That might be metrics, but some things might be hard to metricize. We need to be talking about truth, the truth of our progress here. So that's why I'm going to dive into this topic a little bit. This is foundation setting. So I'm going to kick things off by saying everything I'm about to tell you is wrong. Everything. Nothing I'm going to tell you is true. Not in 100% sort of way. That's because there's always room for improvement. There is no such thing as 100% truth. Gödel's theorem, for example, the incompleteness theorem, shows that no matter what system of logic we put together with the strongest, most well thought out system of truth, which would include all of mathematics and numbers and whatever else you can throw at it is incomplete within that system specifically it says that there will be a statement which you can neither prove true nor false without expanding the system that and many other things have convinced me that no matter what we do there's no finite way to capture truth in the sense of perfect 100 percent truth i have a hypothesis that truth is infinite and infinite in a very specific sense that I think there only is one truth. And that truth is the entirety of existence, the entire universe, the multiverse, everything that could be that we conceive to be anything we can think about all of that all together. And only all of it in totality is truth. Anything less than that is an approximation of truth. Now that sounds all high and mighty, but it has one very pragmatic concrete result, which is that there's always room for improvement. No matter what we have, no matter how perfect we think it is or foundational and cannot be challenged, there is always room to improve it. And personally, right off the bat, I like that. I like that there's going to be always room to improve things. But I also want to say that because as I dive into other topics on this show, I'm going to sometimes seem very sure of myself and I'm going to throw out very strong opinions And I want you to know that I know that they cannot be 100% true, that there is some kernel of false in them, and there are ways that they can improve and evolve. And sometimes they might be very false, not even just a little bit false. I am always learning, and I'm always looking forward to learn new, if we are actually making progress on solving problems faster. And I look very holistically about that from the point of view where we label a problem we want to solve to the time when it is solved, there are many things beyond just software that go into that. There are human problems. There are product market fit problems. There are design problems. There are political problems. There is a whole mass of things that come to taking a concept into a successful delivery along the way. And software engineering is only part of that. If we do something that makes the software engineering easier, but makes those other things worse, we have not succeeded. I am looking forward to how to solve the entire problem of delivering value with software faster. So diving in just a little bit deeper, truth is going to be expressed ultimately in the form of good explanations. So when we say that we have come up with some new way to solve problems faster with software, say it's a new uh, feature in a programming language, 
there's not going to be any way to metricize that and cover all cases and be able to say all possible ways you might possibly use this. It's all good. It's all great. It's all going to be amazing. Instead, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to come up with an explanation of why this has a powerful impact in many cases. And we'll have an explanation for why some cases are better than others and why maybe you shouldn't use this new language construct in, in certain cases. Good explanations are how we're going to talk about truth. And the better the explanation, as David Deutsch says, the harder it is to vary. So it is very specific. And if you change the explanation a little bit, it gets weaker and it is not able to either no longer matches the evidence or it is no longer as specific and as tight. So I'm going to try throughout this program to come up with good explanations for why the things that I believe are true. And again, true is only an approximation. Whenever I use the word true, you will understand that I mean an approximation of truth, not 100% truth. And I hope at some point I'll have other voices on this program as well. And they're going to bring their own angles, which is going to be great. I'm going to learn from that. So I think that covers the gist of what I want to say today. Just want to reiterate that everything I'm going to say in any context is going to have a kernel of false false falsity to it. And that's just the nature of the universe. We are finite beings and it is my hypothesis that the truth cannot be expressed in a finite terms. So everything we express is just an approximation of truth, which is great. Everything we express can be improved, which is opportunity. The world is chock full of opportunity and that's what I'm excited about. And that's really the optimism of this show. <laughs> that is what we're talking about. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much for spending your very valuable time with me. And remember, all problems are solvable with enough knowledge. 